Hello and welcome back to Beirut, the capital of Lebanon. I have my bags and I am leaving today to head to Byblos, further up the coast. I am working my way to the north of this small country. It won't take more than an hour probably. So I'm going to call a Bolt, which is the local taxi app, to make my way to the station and then catch a ride out of the capital to a historic Phoenician port city on my way north over the next couple of days where I'll be visiting a few different places and I'll be telling you all about them. but more of an area where they leave from and these are the ones that all head north so now let's investigate hey I thought Biblos Biblos here come yeah Biblos okay Salam Biblos yeah too bad actually. Looks like quite comfy seats. I think I'm gonna stuff my bags at the back here. I have uh, no idea how much it costs but I will find out. I don't assume it's uh, very much. exchange rate um, for a 40 minute journey north to Biblos. At the official exchange rate um, then it's much more but uh, we're going on the unofficial ones <laughs> here in Lebanon. YouTuber? YouTuber yes yeah. What's where, your name? Uh, Jason. Uh, Jason. And where are you from? Uh, Syria. 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 Oh which city in Syria? Damascus. 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 Okay very beautiful city. I've always wanted I always wanted to visit Damascus. Sorry, my Arabi is shui shui. Hey, 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 right. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. Kay for hala. Aha. Kay for hala. Billen doesn't say YouTuber. Kifek. Kifek. Kifek hala. Tamam. Tamam. Camera. Camera YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, my camera here. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> From Syria, Damascus. I'm going to Biblos. I go to Biblos. Come, okay. Masoud. There is the coastline of the Mediterranean as we go past. The group of very friendly Syrians here are all going together on a group trip to the mountains, they're telling me. And uh, they're all super friendly. Um, they're telling me to visit Syria, which I would love to do one day. around 
the actual center of Biblos is over there, but on Google Maps, my guest house is somewhere that way. So let me check how far it is to walk or if I can uh, potentially nab a taxi with all my bags, that would be easier. Taxi? Um, to Biblos Guest House. Guest House? I'll tell you this. Biblos Guest House. I'll show you on my phone. It is um, this one. Biblos Guest House. All right, so arrived here at my hotel room in Biblos. Really spacious. I am paying 33 US dollars for one night here. And I managed to find a taxi from where I got dropped off by the bus, which was around 50,000 Lebanese pounds. So just over $2 at the unofficial rate. And a sea view. Biblos is over here. The owner of this uh, guest house, it's called Biblos Guest House. He's really friendly, very nice man. Gave me some Lebanese coffee, which is basically the same as Turkish coffee. And he's gonna drop me off in the town, which is a 10 minute, five minute drive away for free. Uh, in about an hour, so that's perfect. And I'll spend the evening walking around Biblos. So just been dropped in the town and first views of Biblos. Let's head I suppose straight. So why visit Biblos of all the places in Lebanon that I could have gone after starting in Beirut? Well, Biblos is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world and most of the town center here is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it's supposed to be very pretty. It dates back, I think, to about seven or 8,000 BC, but correct me if I'm wrong. So here we have what looks like an old Ottoman style street. Various souvenirs. Syria is north of here on the coast, but uh, Turkey isn't too far north ahead. The eastern part of Turkey, that is. Lots of tourists here and touristy things on sale. You could arguably say that Biblos is one of Lebanon's main tourist hubs. As opposed to Tripoli, where I'll be going in the next video, which is a lot more of a local vibe. Salam. Our Lady of the Gate, it says here. Protecting the entrance to the old town, probably from those coming in from the harbor just behind. I will get to the harbor later, but let's head into the Citadel, or also known as the Crusader Castle, just here. So to enter the Crusader Castle, it is 8,000 Lebanese pounds, which is sort of interesting because all the touristy sites in the country, most of them, they are charging the official rate, which would be one US dollar to 1,500 Lebanese pounds. Whereas all the restaurants and private institutions, they are charging an unofficial rate because of the hyperinflation in the country. Like I said in the first video, I will get to talking all about the currency situation. 
in a final video just before I leave the country and I will release that once I'm in the next country after Lebanon. Phoenicians, Romans, Arab invaders, um, Crusaders, Mamluks, Ottomans, then the French, just a few off the top of my head that have been through this country at one stage or another. And you'll notice there are many people here today. It's actually a public holiday for Eid, despite the fact that uh, half of Lebanon's population, pretty much, are some form of Christian, but it's a national holiday, I believe. And so lots of people are visiting the pretty coastal city, which we can see in all its glory right here. Some of the best views at the top of the citadel. It is a 12th century castle and observing the local tourists and all the people that come here as part of the interest for me, not just the history. And if we look over this way towards the sea, there are Bronze Age dwellings here. Biblos is known in Arabic as Jubail, as are many of the cities in Lebanon. They have two names, Tyre, which is also Sur, and so on. As we're now in the full swing of spring, the yellow daisies are lighting up the coastal path here of Biblos. And a little bit further up is an iconic Ottoman house, which you could see from the views looking outwards when standing at the top of the Crusader castle. Salam. Salam alaikum. Tamam. Shukran. Uh, English. Uh, and you speak English? No, I speak French. Do you speak English? Shrey, shrey. Yeah. Follow back. Hmm? Yes, follow back. No, no, okay. no, follow back. No, uh, yes, and for follow me, back. please. No, no, follow back. Show me my Instagram. Uh, yes. hmm? Where is my Instagram? No. Yes. Keep what? Keep it. Is... <laughs> you are all from the same city? Yes. You're from no, the no, same... No, no, I am not. Where I'm are you from? Adanir. Adanir. Danir. Danir. It's... Ah. You cannot... Uh, Speak it perf uh, perfectly. How do I say it? Can you repeat it? Can you say again? I'm all in the middle of the city. Danir. He is not Danir. Danir. Oh, it's not Lebanon. North Lebanon. Oh, okay. North. North. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, uh, yes. Jace. Oh. Sure. Jason. Bit of travel. This is me. Uh, can I take with you a photo? Yeah, of course. Being told to now leave the site as they're closing but that is the secluded ottoman house there by a family built by a family that lived in the region for a long time those young guys there from different parts of lebanon really friendly that's not the first people that have come up to me just to ask for photos and where i'm from and what i'm doing here which shows that obviously there's not so many european or I guess, American tourists. Now filtering back out into the old cobblestone streets of Byblos. Let's have a little wander before I grab some dinner. Bars and restaurants. 
in a beautiful setting. You may think from the outside that because of the currency situation and the electricity shortages and all these other things, hello, that people would really be struggling and they certainly are. But that's not to say that Lebanon does not have a middle class and all the types of establishments that then cater towards that middle class as well. It has all of those things. So there is certainly a lot of tourism going on and a lot of those tourists within Lebanon are locals themselves. If you want to pick up Lebanese souvenirs then this might be the place to do it here in Byblos. Coming away from the markets over there and towards the harbour which is this way I pass the St. John Church which was also built by the Crusaders along with the iconic Crusader Castle Citadel which I just visited in the 12th century too, this one and there was a daily service happening and it was really moving actually everybody in the room was getting involved Even though I wouldn't say I'm particularly religious, of course, um, a Christian by birth, but I don't practice. Uh, but certainly I always find it interesting to walk into any church, temple, mosque, <laughs> synagogue, whatever you, you name the religion, and observe how people are practicing their religion. And there it was different to what we get in the UK. I mean, Catholic, but there are many different types of uh, Christians in Lebanon, pretty much every sect. Maronites are a huge proportion of the population. The Byblos Harbour here. Do you have uh, these fish, three kinds of kinds for uh, fried and uh, this for bread? Okay, what's the name of this one? In Arabic, this is Ajaj, Lukos, Hafash. Okay. It's different in color, orange and white. Uh, Malifa with Barakuda, Sultan Ibrahim, Very good. Tamam, good job. <laughs> Shukran. Thank you. No, I will bring you sauce for it. Okay. Shukran. So I'm having dinner here at Bab Al Mina, that's the name of the restaurant, with a view of the harbour right here. The sun is setting, but it's behind the clouds. I've also got some tabbouleh and potatoes, which I have been eating. It's not a full plate right there because I didn't want them to get cold while I was waiting for my fish. And they are really nice, they're spicy. And uh, the tabbouleh, as I mentioned in the previous video, is parsley with tomatoes, lemon juice, olive oil, uh, all good stuff. So I can't wait to dig into some of the fresh seafood here with a view of the Biblos Harbour. Well, it has to be said, this is really good. The grilled fish is Perfectly done with the tartar sauce. It tastes even better. The potatoes and the fresh salad. Perfect way to 
finish a day's worth of traveling and uh, wandering around. So just finished my dinner there, which was excellent. I really enjoyed tasting the seafood that Biblos has to offer. I recommend that restaurant. Small little chapel here as I meander my way back. And I am going to head to Tripoli tomorrow morning. Oh wow, take a look at this. That is stunning. Tiny little chapel here, it smells very pungently. So I'm going to end this video of Biblos and the journey to get here from Beirut here. I'm heading back early tonight as I want to catch up on some sleep. I went out clubbing in Beirut a couple nights ago, which if you like, for example, techno music, then be sure to check out a club called Ballroom Blitz. It was a lot of fun. As I stand next to a chapel, um, so Beirut's nightlife is great, arguably some of the best in the Middle East. So I'll end things here from Biblos, see you on the next one, cheers.